joined now, uh, we, we look to natural gas, which is uh, often cited as a key transition fuel and that we've had much heard about uh, already today in various sessions in both plenaries and in this very track. I'm very pleased to be joined today by Balawunti, who is the Group General Manager of Nigeria National Petroleum Investment Management Services. Mr. Winty, welcome to the stage. Okay, uh, ladies and gentlemen, again, uh, very good afternoon to you. Uh, greetings from Nigeria. Uh, as you are aware, NMPC uh, is a national oil company, and basically uh, we've been delivering energy for over six decades. But just a little bit of recap about my country, Nigeria. 213 million people uh, with a lot of energy resource. At the last count, we have proven energy resource of up to 450 quadrillion BTUs. We're currently producing at the rate of six quadrillion, and we consume about 1.7 of that. Of all that we consume, most of it are natural gas, and a lot come also from hydro. But most importantly is the geography where we stay. We're very much vintage in the sense that though we are in the Atlantic, in the Gulf of Guinea, we are able to play Pacific, we're also able to deliver energy across the Atlantic and in Europe, of course. Uh, we deliver energy to over 60 countries across six continents for over six decades. Currently, the National Oil Company, as of 2020, has a total asset of over $64 billion. And of course, our revenue is very, very um, modest of $12 billion. And so going from to the future is just to understand what exactly are we trying to do. Uh, it's just to set the context. The context is here, market, investment, and finance. They are connected, and I know that people in this room are expert and understand the nexus. But specifically for the purpose of today, we are looking at it from energy transition perspective. And when we talk about energy transition, uh, in this room, I think we are part-time without number. Focus should be about achieving what energy transition intend to achieve, which is to enter that car. And that car is clean, affordable, and reliable energy. And if you have to get energy transition toward that objective, it therefore means that every source of energy matters. And in the context of what we are doing, hydrocarbon will continue to play a role. And so it's important that we try to connect the market for which that provide the platform where this energy are traded. And then to support the unlocking of this energy, to unlock energy resource from my country like Nigeria and many other sources uh, certainly requires significant investment. And in investment can only be enabled by finance. Sadly, what we have seen recently is that the finance or capital has become very, very discriminatory. Discriminatory against fossil fuel. Nobody wants to fund fossil fuel. But everybody likes energy. We understand that we don't like emission. But we all love energy. And if we love energy, then we have to be very systematic. And therefore, the trend whereby uh, fossil fuel is being uh, denied investment is going to show up in one form or shape in the future. And it's important that while we're trying to achieve cleaner energy, we also don't deliberately sacrifice uh, uh, our investment that will ensure that the energy is delivered on a reliable basis. Uh, most importantly, I think it's important for us to recognize the fact that uh, finance today has become also less patient. There's no more patient capital. Every investor wants to invest today and get his reward tomorrow. The energy sector is a long haul. And we recognize that how do we play in between uh, how fast we can deliver and go to market and scale up and get money vis-a-vis -vis the long haul nature of energy resource, especially hydrocarbon energy resource. I think these are the thinking and these are the context that total leaders should be able to focus on. We need finance to support investment. Investment is required to deliver energy. Energy is required and should be traded in a transparent way in the marketplace. Uh, let's look at where we're coming from or why we are today. If you look at the cumulative growth rate of energy today, except for fossil fuel, very high fossil fuel like coal, like biomass, every other one is growing, including oil. 
But the most important thing is that if you look at the total consumption of oil, as reported by IEA, is that even in 2050, at the step 46 scenario, you will have hydrocarbon, precisely oil and gas, contributing over 50% of the global energy mix. And if 50% of your global energy mix is being denied investment capital, then we have made one decision, and that decision is to create short supply of tomorrow. And when we create short supply of tomorrow, the consequence of demand supply will set in, and that will lead to very significant crisis. We've already seen that crisis happening today. And we've seen a lot of it, some in terms of social uh, unrest, but some in a very salient way that is shaping the way and manner we make decisions. In this country today, the battle is about inflation. And every attempt to adjust the rate, we have seen that it's not working, simply because we are not addressing the root cause of that inflation. And that root cause of that inflation is energy. And in as long as we are not able to address the energy issue, that inflation dynamics cannot change. And we therefore have to be ready for a long haul and inflationary trend. It's not going to be transitional or less than until we're able to get that energy equation right. And I think it is therefore important for people in this room to be able to balance our expression vis-a-vis uh, -vis with what is realistically uh, possible. And so we in Nigeria are focused at looking at what exactly does our resource need of? How can we support the world in delivering energy? How can we continue to deliver the energy we're delivering? And to look at that, we need to look at, again, the demand. Whether you look at it from the outlook that is provided by IEA, uh, be it the on-step scenario, or even on the real outlook, uh, or you look at the next zero. When you see the orange and the black, they're all growing. Energy demand will grow, and we've seen it minimum of about 1% across. Of course, 1% oil will grow about 0.5%. Uh, I mean, uh, but look at what is happening in terms of supply whether it's natural gas from the red angle or the oil, they're all heading south. Demand go north, fossil fuel go, go south. And the consequence of that, obviously, is that you need significant source of energy to fill that gap. We don't see how renewable is going to meet that gap. You need all sorts of energy for you to be able to do that. And to do that, you need investment. And that investment today, like I said earlier, is discriminating against fossil fuel. It's discriminating and also is making itself very impatient. This chart is very instructive. If there's anything I want you to take away is that if we don't manage this carefully, we are going to encounter a lot of social destabilization across the region in the world. We've seen today what is happening in Europe. We've seen what is happening in Sri Lanka and other places. But even America is not insulated. And therefore, it's very important that while we are trying to pursue transition, we should not look at transition as switching from one point to the other. We should look at transition more on its own objective. How do we produce and deliver clean, affordable, and reliable energy? How do we create a balance between security of supply vis-a-vis -vis clean energy, less emission? I think that's where the, the focus should be. And when you look at this in the context of market is to look at the prices of energy, hydrocarbon in particular, oil in particular. You discover that the correlation between investment and oil price has long been established and it has never changed, even in the current crisis. The R square is over seven, about 70%. And what that means is that in as long as you continue to decelerate investment, it will have significant impact on your energy prices. Denying investment, you are creating short supply of tomorrow. And that definitely will lead to high energy price uh, prices. And that's why we're saying that it's important that while we try to pursue the issue of energy transition, we should do it very, very carefully. We'll be reckless in bringing ourselves here. But we should be careful in trying to exit out of the current problem that we have. And the way to get out of it is to remember today at the Brooklyn Bridge. There's a bridge that is not only crossing over to the other side of New York, but that there's a bridge that will help us to transit from high carbon intensive emission to low carbon intensive emission. 
In my country, for example, we intend to liberate on our natural gas resource, which we have over six trillion, as you know. And what we are looking for is how can we produce this energy? How do you can produce this gas? How do you deliver it? We're looking for investment, we're looking for finance, and we're looking for everything. Target is to be able to deliver this energy in the most sustainable way so that we will continue to deliver clean, affordable, and reliable energy. And this bridge, I think, is very, very important for us. We are taking it very seriously in our country, and we'll continue to do that, and therefore inviting everybody that has money to come and join us. And in joining us, we also want to deploy the best of technology, be it carbon capture technology, be it hydrogen technology. We really want to participate in the hydrogen value chain. A lot of discussion about hydrogen, green hydrogen, but I think it's also important to recognize that blue hydrogen has a place. And therefore, all kind of hydrogen, whether it's blue, whether it's green, whether it's red for nuclear and every other hydrogen, gray, they are all needed to be able to do that. But as has been heard severally, it's wanting to have the capability to produce hydrogen. The technology is there, we understand, but the market is not yet matured. So we need to put the market vis-a-vis -vis the ability to produce by the countries, I think. And so, irrespective of what it is, for us in Nigeria, we are poised at making sure that we participate in the blue hydrogen value chain, we participate in the natural gas value chain, and we try to amplify it either to play commercial or chemicals or whatever we can in the most responsible way. And that responsibility is anchored around what we are looking at. I think the, uh, the lady from UN has said it all. There's no going to be a common approach to energy transition. Particularly when we understand the 101 of transition, if you are moving from high carbon to low carbon. I came from a region in Africa where energy poverty is very high. In my country, I'm ashamed to say that we have significant energy deficiency. And the consequence of that, we are burning firewood to cook food. Our domestic cooking foil is firewood, it's biomass. What does transition mean to that person? If you give him coal, that's a step ahead. If you give him oil, that's much better. But if you give him gas, that's much better. What we are doing in our country is we are switching right from biomass to gas, natural gas. And if we do that, we believe that we'll be in even a better position to build a new infrastructure, new infrastructure that will be cleaner and better. While people are battling to more or less kind of multiple their coal plan and the rest of them. We don't have coal plan. We have coal, but we're not burning it. We're going to go straight into natural gas. And therefore, if you really need to have a clean energy from that, that's one I'm glad to do. The target for us is 2026. We want to be energy sufficient. And that energy sufficiency will mean we can then start looking at how do we now migrate to our net zero. Uh, I think our government has given commitment of 2060. Uh, uh, it's, it's very achievable. We have planned to do that. And some of those plans include some of the tools that some of our industry with our partners, Shell, Mobile, Exxon, and, um, I mean, uh, Chevron, and the rest of them. We're all focusing at making sure that we have done everything, including renewing our infrastructure, replacing some of the high carbon cons uh, consumption uh, to Tulo, Tulo carbon consuming fuel. We're trying to replant pla plants. As you know, we're cutting trees, we're creating desertification and environmental menace. We're trying to replant and we're trying to rebrand. These are the approaches that in my country that we're trying to do, particularly in the upstream community. And we're making progress in that. And therefore, the invitation is for everybody to consider uh, that a country like Nigeria, 450 quadrillion BTU, ready to be delivered. And if you want to put it in context today, it can power New York for 120 years but it needs to be unlocked. And to unlock it, we need investment. Investment need capital. And therefore, the investing community in this room are very much cordially invited to please think of investment destination in Africa and think of Nigeria. Thank you very much. Fantastic.